Good Wednesday afternoon, everyone. This is Daniel Crawley, Foothills Action Network. Hope you're having a good day across the western Carolinas. Of course, the big weather story is Hurricane Zeta that is about to make landfall on the coast of Louisiana later today. And the impacts that Zeta not only is going to have there, but will have into our part of the country here in the western Carolinas. And unfortunately, it's looking like the uh, severity of the impacts may be training upward at this time. I'm going to go into a lot of detail on what we see and uh, we've made some changes with some of our rainfall forecast and uh, wind potential forecast for our area we'll go into that first off you can see zeta uh late uh or actually it's about lunchtime right now as we're doing this video is located a couple hundred miles or so to the south of the louisiana coastline zeta is moving to the north and starting to curve a little bit to the north northeast at about 18 miles per hour and uh, this storm is really packed a punch as you probably remember late yesterday uh, Zeta was just kind of reorganizing as it was getting back out into the Gulf of Mexico then overnight it intensified quite a bit became a hurricane again and at this time it has maximum sustained winds of 90 miles per hour so a high-end category one hurricane that is getting ready to hit Louisiana coastline and our thoughts go out to them because Louisiana has been hit so hard this hurricane season and uh, they're going to get another one unfortunately here in the next uh, 6 to 12 hours. But Zeta is going to impact our weather in a big way as well. I'm going to first show you the uh, latest in the short range computer data and, you, and I'm going to kind of show the evolution of how this is all going to pan out over the next 24 hours. As you, as you can see we do have uh, rain showers that have impacted our area today and will continue to do so through the afternoon hours meanwhile zeta is getting ready to make landfall on the coast of louisiana late this afternoon and it will even accelerate even faster as we head into tonight i would not be at all surprised by the time this gets on shore that it's moving at over 20 mile per hour and then as it begins to link up with the jet stream when it gets to our part of the country it could be moving as fast as 30 miles per hour. Here's a look at the future radar at midnight, and you can see a lot of rains really starting to set in uh, across our area from the mountains to the foothills in the western Piedmont. Here's the core of Zeta moving into Alabama, and I will continue to progress that. This is at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, and really the core of Zeta is going to be over the mountains and foothills of western North Carolina at 8 a.m. We are going to have very heavy rainfall. We're going to have some gusty and potentially damaging winds starting tomorrow morning. And that will quickly move off to the north and east. And believe it or not, the bulk of the rain may actually end around noon or so uh, from west to east in our coverage area. There still will be some showers because there will be a lot of tropical moisture uh, still in the air and with the upper low this big upper low system it's driving all this off the north and east it's still to our west so there's actually a chance that we could get a few showers tomorrow afternoon and they could be kind of gusty as well so we'll have to keep an eye on that and then hopefully as we head into Thursday evening things will start drying out and then cold air is going to rush in here for the weekend for your Halloween it's gonna be really chilly uh, temperatures very late fall like so that's what we're looking at kind of at the timeline as far as the storm on the computer models. Now, here's the latest information, and this is very important. It's come out in the last hour or so. Uh, the folks at the National Weather Service in Greenville Spartanburg has issued a inland tropical storm watch. Folks, we do not get that around here often. The only time that I remember, I'm thinking a tropical storm watch might have been issued during the remnants of Hurricane Michael a couple years ago and it was for parts of our coverage area. But we are once again uh, looking at the potential of heavy rainfall and some potentially damaging winds. That is why the National Weather Service has issued the Tropical Storm Watch. Uh, winds can vary depending on the exact track of the storm. So there's still a lot of variables out there. I think the areas that you really need to watch is if you live on any of the southern facing ridge tops, if you live uh, in the South Mountains area, if in Burke and Caldwell and Northeast Rutherford County, uh, the Grandview Peaks area in Southeast McDowell County, <clears throat> excuse me, 
If you were in the Hickory Nut Gorge area of around Chimney Rock State Park, that is another area, southern facing slopes. Those areas could really get some strong winds potentially uh, from the leftovers of Zeta. Now, technically, if you look at the watch, uh, Caldwell and Alexander counties are not included. Honestly, that's just a technicality. I would not be surprised to see them added to the tropical storm watch, uh, maybe with the afternoon forecast package from the Weather Service. And I would not at all be surprised to see some areas upgraded to a tropical storm warning. So uh, that is something that would probably come out later tonight or maybe first thing in the morning. And as you see, the tropical storm watch is not only for the foothills, western Piedmont, they go back into the mountains around Asheville and over toward Cherokee and then down into upstate of South Carolina. So this is a really wide impacting event potentially and something that uh, we're going to keep our eye on over the next 12 to 24 hours as it moves into the region. Now, the key messages that we need to portray to you, first off, Zeta is a 90 mile per hour hurricane as of 11 a.m. this morning and is moving north at 18. Zeta will make landfall later today in southeast Louisiana. Of course, rainfall is already impacting our region today, and it will only increase as we head into tonight, and it will really reach its peak uh, tomorrow morning across the foothills and the western Piedmont. The core of Zeta's remnant will move in, as I said, tomorrow morning, and will probably move out no later than the early afternoon hours. Flash flooding is possible on Thursday, especially in the foothills, because the track of the low center will actually run right up the spine of the Appalachians. So if you're in the foothills, you're in a prime uh, area for upslope flow and just the general uh, distance between you and the storm, you're probably going to get some pretty good rainfall amounts in the foothills. Those rainfall amounts will taper off fairly quick as you head east. And I'll show you that map. We've updated that a little bit to kind of show you the, the, uh, the tapering of the precip as you head east. The other thing that we really need to portray at this point, damaging winds will move into the area Thursday morning and will last through a part of the afternoon, even after the low itself passes. Uh, the damaging winds are capable of downing trees and power lines. So I would prepare for at least scattered power outages across the area uh, as we head into Thursday. Of course, that is all subject to change depending on where this thing exactly tracks. The overall impacts for the area, uh, tornadoes, you cannot ever rule out a tornado uh, during a tropical weather event. We think it'll be fairly low, uh, probably given the fact that the core remnant will be moving in during the morning hours. Uh, if this was moving in during the afternoon where it'd be a little bit more warm and unstable, we probably wouldn't have a higher tornado threat, but right now we're keeping it at low. Flooding, we have it low, but on the higher end of the low range. And reason why is we feel like that some mountain areas, some foothill areas that get traditional upslope could get four, five, maybe six inches of rain. And the other thing that we're keeping an eye on is the fact that uh, when the core of Zeta moves in tomorrow morning, some areas, even away from the, the media Blue Ridge, could get a two to three inch burst of rain in a fairly short period of time. And that could result in some small stream flooding. That could result in some urban, urban flooding issues, especially when you think about this time of year with leaves on the ground and leaves on sidewalks and curbs and uh, blocking drainage pipes and stuff like that. So that's something we'll have to keep an eye on. The biggest thing you've probably noticed compared to yesterday's video, we have put the wind damage into the moderate range. Uh, we feel like that this could be a little bit more of an issue compared to what we were saying yesterday as we have generally upped the values that we think could potentially happen across the area. It doesn't mean that all areas will see it, but some areas could see potentially winds in excess of 50 miles per hour. And I'll go into detail on who may see that in a few minutes. Again, let's kind of go through the timeline of Zeta. We'll start here with the rain aspect. The rain is really gonna be heavy starting overnight. It's gonna peak, uh, unfortunately, for the morning commute on Thursday. 
that's going to be awful for um, folks in our coverage area. Your, your travels first thing tomorrow morning are not going to be fun, and that's going to last probably up to about lunchtime. Then it will taper off fairly quick. The damaging wind aspect, we've had to increase and put a high level on that a little bit, especially uh, probably mid-morning to about early afternoon. Again, the tornado threat we've talked about is fairly low, but if there's a time frame that it could happen, it would be anywhere from probably mid-morning to early afternoon. Now, let's scroll down here just a little bit, and we're going to get into the, uh, the rainfall maps first and this kind of goes into what i've uh, just mentioned a few minutes ago with the track of the storm going up the spine of the appalachians there will be an area of heavy rainfall and we had this uh here in the uh the orange basically along the blue ridge and east to about highway 321 and those rainfall amounts will be on a baseline from two to four inches across parts of Rutherford, McDowell, Burke, and Caldwell counties. Uh, the areas of upslope could get up to the upper end of that range that we have on there are five inches, maybe even a little bit more. The good thing is that this storm is moving so fast that nat naturally is going to limit your rainfall amounts. But still, with what we got going on today and then adding a quick burst of maybe two to three inches in a short period of time, it's going to pile up to where some areas are going to see a pretty good amount across the Blue Ridge. Now, if you get further east of that, and you can sit in the green shading, we're including Taylorsville, Hickory, and down to Shelby, you're going to start to taper off, but I believe one to three inches is a pretty good bet. Um, again, it won't be as much as we got back toward the mountains, but it's still going to be a pretty healthy rain event. And then this area in blue that we've kind of added, eastern Catawba, eastern Lincoln, especially when you get over toward I-77, the rainfall amounts are really going to cut off quick. So it would not at all surprise me that some of these areas may not even see one inch of rain, which is hard to believe with the tropical system. But it's moving so fast that it's going to limit the rainfall amounts. On the other hand, somebody five miles down the road may get an inch, inch and a half rain, depending on where the the heavy band set up. So in that blue area, we've kind of put it between a half inch and an inch and a half. And that, that should kind of cover both ends of the extreme in that area. And again, that is for uh, Lincolnton, Boger City, Lowesville, Sherrill's Ford area. Now, the, the real significant change that we've had to make since yesterday is the maximum wind gust potential. Um, we still think that most areas in the lower elevations here in the yellow are going to see wind gusts at least 30 and can go as high as 45 miles per hour at some time uh, late Thursday morning or maybe into early Thursday afternoon. Another thing we're watching, and it's really the guidance is kind of helping us on this a little bit, there has been a pretty persistent swath of higher winds that could run out of uh, the southwest mountains of North Carolina and could cut across uh, lower Rutherford County and then across Cleveland County, western Lincoln, and parts of Catawba. We have upped that area to the potential of 40 to maybe as high as 55 mile per hour wind gusts. Now again, that does not guarantee that you're going to see 55 mile per hour wind gusts in Far City or Longdale, or Vale, or uh, Newton Conover, but the potential in that area has raised up enough to where we have added that. And also, and we've talked about this all along, any of the south-facing slopes here in southern McDowell, southwestern McDowell, northwest Rutherford, and then along the Blue Ridge Parkway, with elevation, is going to be higher. So um, we think those areas as well could uh, reach 55 mile per hour at times. And, you know, if you head on up into the high country and head up on some of the peaks like Mount Mitchell, there's no tell winds could be 60 or 70 mile per hour. So 
uh, this is going to be a, a, a pretty significant event for the area and something that you need to keep an eye on, especially over the next 12 to 24 hours. Again, I want to kind of go into the timeline, and this is where we'll finish this update. The worst of the rain will be overnight through about noon tomorrow. The damaging wind potential will increase drastically after about 8 a.m. and will last into the early afternoon. And the tornado threat, while we have it low, could be in and at mid-morning to maybe a little bit after lunchtime time frame. So that is what we're looking at. We are looking at a very dynamic storm system as Zeta continues to make its way toward the northern Gulf Coast. And tonight it will accelerate and make its way into the western Carolinas. As always, uh, stay with us at Foothills Action Network. If you have not yet downloaded our weather app, please do so. The Foothills weather app, you can find it in your local app store. You can get the radar. You can get your watches and warnings, lightning data. You can get everything, and we'll keep you updated on that as well. Uh, one feature on our app is the live weather updates, which links you to our YouTube channel. This video and other videos that we'll do during this event will be put on our YouTube channel. So all kinds of ways that you can catch our content on the app, here on social media, and at our uh, website, foothillsweathernetwork.com. So this is Daniel Crawley with the Foothills Action Network. Stay weather aware the next 24 hours. It's going to get pretty active around here. And uh, be prepared for the potential of heavy rain, flash flooding, and maybe even some wind damage and power outages.